Hello and welcome to the video review of Transformers Generations Bumblebee. Got this guy off uh, ToysRUs.com and he arrived uh, a few days later. So this guy is packaged in robot mode. He is a deluxe class figure and to preface the review, he is freaking awesome. There are a few little nags I have about the figure though, but we'll get into that in a minute. The robot, uh, the figure is packaged in robot mode and he does have Bumblebee's uh, telltale face and very, very classic face, which is absolutely awesome. I adore the look on this face. Very, very G1-esque, which is awesome. Uh, only problem with the head is it doesn't have too much uh, rotation ability. I'm sorry, not rotation ability, but uh, flexibility. He can't. That's about as far up as he's going to be able to look. But otherwise, the head is perfectly fine. Articulation on this figure is quite nice. Uh, very nice, in fact. Arms rotate a good amount. They even have some in and out movement thanks to the transformation. There is upper arm mobility, double jointed hinges on the arms, which is very, very nice. And then the hands, while they don't move, they do spin. Bumblebee does come with a gun. It's not the biggest gun, or it's not nearly as big as it shows up in the War for Cybertron game, but it's you know what? It does the job and it's quite nice. And I believe this is one of the first times that I can remember Bumblebee having a weapon or a G1 Bumblebee having a gun. He also has two swords, which I'm not sure if they're supposed to flip out on their own. They just kind of ratchet out on my figure. But they're a nice, uh, this nice clear red pink. And honestly, it's a nice touch. I really kind of wish that they were the swords were actually a little longer, but they're more like dirks and daggers than anything else. And it's, you know what? It's a nice, nice touch. As you can see, red is in the figure quite a bit, and when we get to the vehicle mode, it's really prominent in the vehicle mode, much more so than in the robot mode. Uh, he has some uh, twisty hips, but thanks to the backpack, that is limited a bit. And then we've got tons of articulation in the legs. Uh, feet, not too, there, there is a ball joint back here, but there's not too much articulation there because of the nature of the design of the robot foot. But you can still get some very nice poses out of this guy. Negatives in this mode are, unfortunately, the head. I'm not completely crazy about the color. I really wish it was a more vibrant yellow than this uh, darker yellow, but I can deal with it. The legs, I would have liked uh, some more articulation in the feet, but hey, you know what? Concessions have to be made for the way the vehicle mode and the transformation. My only other complaint, is, and this does carry over into vehicle mode, is some of the panels don't stay together all that well. As you can see, there is a, a little gr tongue and groove action going on there. But it doesn't, it just sits there. It doesn't actually hold it in there, unfortunately. My other complaint is, ultimately, the robot mode is pretty much hollow in the chest area. Again, due to the transformation, but it is a little bit annoying. But oh well. And speaking of the transformation, let's go ahead and get to it. This is a rather complex transformation, especially for a deluxe class figure and especially for a Bumblebee figure. Uh, you will be happy, it, I don't know if you'll be happy to note, but this section will form the front of the vehicle. So we're actually going to start off with the legs because that's where the directions start off. We're going to just fold the feet out just a bit. If you fold it out anymore, it's gonna pop the ball joint. Come in here and pop this off and rotate these both all the way around. Take the wheels and they're slid all the way in. You slide them out and lock them on the outside. Come back around here and rotate this whole section around and then take the bottom of the foot and there's a little groove there which, is, which will fit that hinge. So we'll do the same thing on this side. And sometimes it gets a little bit 
weird, but that's okay. Now when you move the wheel out, you can then collapse the rest of the leg like such. These two will sandwich together eventually, which you just spread the legs out and kind of sandwich them like that. Unfortunately, they don't connect together, which is a little bit annoying, especially later in the mode or in the car mode, but eh, oh well. So coming up to the robot or to this mode, we're going to kind of just do what we can to get this slider on the backpack to slide out. There we go. And then what we'll do, this just folds very strangely, but we'll get to that in a second. Next, we're going to rotate the head into the body of the vehicle. And this is actually not that easy. You kind of have to force it a little bit, unfortunately. Then we'll come up here and just get all of these panels into place like that and lift them straight up like this. And the reason we lift it straight up like that is so we can come back here and actually, you know what, I'm just gonna get these out of that out of the way. We'll rotate these back all the way like this, turn it, and this peg right here will go into that hole right there. And sometimes and you just have to play with it until they line up. It's not super easy, but it will eventually go. So we'll do the same thing on this side. Because because of the amount of articulation he has in robot mode, this doesn't always line up quite right on either side and they pop out very easily okay so there we go so next we'll take this whole section and rotate it forward and get that tongue and groove in there you see it just pops right out on my figure I don't know if that's a problem with the mold or just, you know, me. There we go. Uh, one major issue I have with my figure is even when all of this is lined up correctly, this, this is a little bit too big for that hole on my figure. Don't know why. I guess the plant in China just kind of screwed up a little bit. Or Taiwan or wherever it was made. And then once I just hold it and then... We'll bring the canopy in, and this is a pain because you have to line everything up. Once you do that, you can unjoint, you can detach that, and then bring the legs in. And this is a pain in the tailpipe. Just getting all of this tucked up in there, and then getting everything lined up correctly. This is the worst part of the figure, honestly, right here. This transformation is fun until this point. It's very much a problem. So, give me a second. Now, once you've forced everything into that shell, and it is surprising that Bumblebee is, in fact, a type of shell former, as you can see under there. Now his gun can fit back under here, uh, either this little piece of plastic will actually fit in the groove right here on the gun, but honestly, there we go, see, like that. Uh, probably the, tra the transformation is by far the worst part of the figure, simply because things don't line up quite right, especially on my figure, it, and that's probably due to me more than anything else. But when you, get the, when you get the car mode together, I love this car mode. I absolutely adore it. I think it's great, it's cute, but at the same time it's got wonderful highlights, these nice red highlights. It rolls really well even when I have it slightly mistransformed like I think I have. It just looks really, really neat. And you can tell as soon as this 
toy shows up in this vehicle mode, it's Bumblebee. And I absolutely adore this mode. My main complaint, though, is the transformation. It is almost too much. It's a very, very difficult transformation. It's nowhere... Prime's transformation is nowhere near this hard. But, that being said, I cannot argue with the results. The vehicle mode is fantastic. Sleek, futuristic. I would love to drive this car. I would just need a you know windshield right here so I could actually see where the hell I'm going. So, should you pick this figure up? There are some minor... Um, Minor quality concerns with this fig quality control concerns. You saw some of the flashing uh, there and there on the legs and on the black. And you see uh, right straight back there, there's some flashing. But otherwise, the figure's really nice. And you really, really deserve to have a figure like this. His robot mode is phenomenal. His vehicle mode, once you get it in it, is very nice to look at and looks great on the shelf. So I really can't recommend this guy enough. Yes, there are some minor problems that, honestly, they can all be looked past because this is a fantastic figure.